Manual pre-charge is done. Contactors ready. Let's see how the Alpon 5.1 kilowatt hour battery and this $300 6.2 kilowatt hour inverter hold up under load. We've got a momentary push button here. Press that in. It closes the relay and it puts this pre-charge resistor across the contacts of the contactor which precharges the capacitors and the inverter. Once it's charged up, that only takes like a one or two seconds. Then you can turn on the power. Contacts close on the contactor and the inverter's got power. Now the reason I'm doing this, later on I want to automate all this, but for right now, just to get some tests done on the inverter, we're going to do it all manually. All right, we had a request in the last video to come up with some kind of a visual indicator for this pre-charge circuit. What I came up with, I've got some of these LED light bulbs. These are these run off of uh, DC 12 volts to 60 volts and they're they're 3 watts. So what we've got, I put that across the resistor. So when I hit the the pre-charge button, you'll see the light come on and then go off when the capacitors are charged fully. It's pretty quick. Let's make sure the inverter's on so nothing came on so the capacitors are totally discharged. Now I'm going to press the pre-charge button and it's charged up. Let's turn the inverter on and you can see that the capacitors were charged. And there you go. Capacitors were charged up. We turned it on. It ran off the charge on the capacitors and then it shut off. Let's do it again. Pre-charge button. Turn the inverter on. Alright, there you go. Let's, um, just for the heck of it, let's just put the light bulb by itself across the contactor and see how long that, that takes to charge. This is just the light bulb by itself. There you go, that's about out. Okay, there's a little demo of that. Then we've got the Victron 500 amp smart chunt that's going to do the data logging for us on, on the initial runs. Let's fire it up and see what it's going to do, I guess. For this test, we're going to run one amp miner. That's going to give us about 3,200 watts in that area. We'll see exactly when I, when I power it up. But it should be 3,200, 3,300 watts. It's, it just has the stock firmware in it, the stock bit main firmware. So I can't, this one I can't throttle up or down. So it's going to be what it's going to be. This initial test, we're going to see what, uh, how the battery behaves, how the inverter behaves. And we'll take it from there, I guess. Let me, um, let me take you around a little bit closer before we start up so you can see what all we did here. And this is the momentary contact. If I press this, you'll hear this relay click. All right. So that relay, that relay puts this resistor across these terminals of the contactor. And that'll pre-charge, this is a, a 25 watt, 20 ohm resistor. That'll pre-charge the capacitors in the inverter so that you don't get a big inrush current. And then we've got the Victron smart shunt over here. This needs to be cleaned up a little bit, but I've, I've got a full charge on the battery. And here, make sure it's still a full charge. At 
Now the voltage is a little bit low. I got to adjust that. So the next run, I'm going to set the voltage up a little bit higher. Let's go ahead and start this thing up, see what it's going to do. Also, after we get this initial startup done, I'm going to take the cover off and uh, put a IR camera on it. I'm particularly curious as to the IGBTs, what those are going to be running at. We're only going to be pulling about half the capacity of the inverter with the one miner, so hopefully everything goes all right. Okay. Power up. I think I have everything set where it should be on the inverter. I adjusted it up to 240. It was at 230. You can set it at 220, 230, or 240. And the higher the voltage, the more, the more efficient it's going to run. So I'm, I cranked it all the way up. Okay. The moment of truth here. We've got 1.2 amps of idle current here right now. Let's, um, I'm going to put a couple clamp meters and check voltages too as we go along here. One point oh one amps. This is saying one point two. So which one is which one's more accurate? Let's start the miner up. It's gonna get a little noisy in here. Three point five amps so far. One hundred and fifty five watts. It's going to take a while for this thing to ramp up. Three point six amps out of the battery. All right, looks like it's mining. Let's see what we got here for. Three point one five kilowatts. It's drawing. Sixty six amps. That says 65.3 amps, so we're pretty close. This says 67 amps. All right, we're at 66 over there, 67 there. So these two are pretty close at, at this current. 67.3 and 67. Says 97%. And according to this, one hour, 26 minutes to empty. That's pretty good. I mean, I, I figured between hour and hour and a half, and I didn't know exactly what, what that miner was gonna draw, so let's, 3.2 kilowatts. Oh, that's pretty close. Figured about 3.2, 3.3 kilowatts. The Victron, Smart shunt is saying, I don't know if you can read that, 3,420 watts. 
time remaining, 45 minutes, so something obviously isn't calibrated right here. Well, let's see where it ends up. Probably shouldn't do this with the inverter running, but I don't feel like stopping it right now. Let's see what the thermal camera says. This is a top down TC002C duo. And it's just a little USB dongle. Plug it into your phone. There's the inverter. Fifty two C. Having a little problem because of this plastic here. Some resistors up on top there. There's four surface mount resistors that are running pretty hot, 60C. The heat sink's running about 51C. I can't get a good reading on the IGBTs, maybe through here. Yeah, it's about 51C. I can just barely get into that one over there. Cables are about 32C. And the connector there at the fuse is 38C. 35 on the top one. According to the manual, fault code 02 is over temperature shutdown, and that's at 100 degrees C. So we're way below that. Those two toroidal coils are at 44.7 C. The top IGBT is still at 55 C. I guess she's going to hang right about there. The electrolytic capacitors are cold. So I would say so far she's doing pretty good. According to this, one hour, 10 minutes to empty. Still drawing 65.7 amps down here. This is saying 67 amps out of the battery, according to the BMS. I think you might be able to see that display from there. If I get too close, it gets uh, blurry. 55.3 on that first IGBT still. So. 46.2 on the toroid coil. 49 on the other one, 50. 50 on the other one. Didn't have my mic on me. I was saying it's just lukewarm air coming out of the bottom here. We got 14 amps at 240 volts. So According to that, it's about 3,300 watts. It says we're halfway done, 55% discharge. We got 49 minutes left to empty. Current still at 66, voltage 51.69. Think I got the cutoff. 
Let me check. All right, I got the cutoff set at 48 volts. I guess next run I'll lower that down to maybe 47 and a half volts. 238.7 volts. According to this meter. According to the smart shot. We used 2.7 kilowatt hours so far. We've got 43 minutes left to empty. I'm going to stop it at 50 volts. I don't want to hammer the battery too hard the first couple times around here. All right. Let the miner cool off a little bit. I would say that was a successful run. Had no issues at all running 1S19. I guess the next test will be two of them. All right, guys. Well, this was a long, boring one. Hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> I guess I'll, uh, I'll see you on the next one. Have a good one. Adios.